Kia ora gentlemen, end of topic test for the 2019 complex numbers. Have a look, have a watch, you'll find after each question there is the marking schedule and after the marking schedule for each question is uh, me going through where I um, got achieved the merit ticks for. See the grey boundary at the bottom right here, um, not achieved 0 to 9, those were just the general gist from um, NCA uh, grade boundaries. Note this one here has questions A through D in the externals you're most likely to see A through E. Hopefully that makes sense and if it does um, let me know. Cheers, good luck. Okay so W is U plus V so W will equal U which is negative 2 plus 3I plus V which is 2 minus I when we're adding complex numbers together, we add the real parts. So negative 2 plus 2 plus uh, imaginary parts, 3i minus i, which gives us 2i. Now, we have to plot on the R-gram diagram, so I'm going to plot that there at 2i. This one here, when we got to express a and b as rational numbers, what we really need to do is uh, rationalize the denominator. And to rationalize the denominator, we times by the conjugate. Okay, so when we're timesing by the conjugate, what happens to the bottom line is that the irrational numbers or the thirds will disappear. Top line becomes 2 plus 2 root 3 plus 1 root 3 plus root 3 times root 3, which is 3, all divided by root 3, um, it's not, it's divided by 1 plus root 3, I missed that first one, minus root 3 minus, again, 3. So here, these thirds, these irrational numbers will disappear on the bottom line. This will leave us with 5 on the top plus 3 root 3, 1 minus 3 on the bottom, that's negative 2. So to leave it in the form as it asks above, that's going to be 5 over negative 2, or negative 5 over 2, minus 3 over 2, root 3. Next one, well you've got z to the power of 4 is what you're trying to find. So, um, why don't we just change 2 minus 2i z into polar form. Okay, so the modulus of z is the square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared, which is 4, that's 8, that's root 8. The argument of z is the arc cosine of the real part divided by the modulus. Check that with the um, arc sine of the imaginary part divided by the modulus and that will give you an answer of negative pi over 4 or negative 45 degrees. Okay. Um, actually that will give you positive Pi over 4, and that will give you negative 45. So the argument is, the argument of z is um, negative pi over 4. Okay, and if you think about that, this complex number on an argon diagram, 2, negative 2, it's down there. That's just a isosceles triangle, so that angle there has to be 45 degrees. But anyway, <coughs> what we've got, is z equals root 8 cis negative pi over 4. So if we're trying to find z to the power of 4, we're going to raise that to the power of 4, which by the Moivre's theorem says it's going to be root 8 to the power of 4, cis negative pi over 4 times 4, which is just going to leave us with 8 times 8, which is 64. Uh, cis negative pi.
as you can see the marking schedule so um, correct answer but you must plot it correct answer modulus or correct angle so uh, this one or this one gives you an achieve tick or you don't get two you just get one and then you apply the correct theorem and get your answer down there looking at this uh, my question there is my achieve tick from here making sure that I um, write it in this form there is my achieve tick and here giving me uh, either the modulus or the argument is an achieved answering the question is my merit okay so <clears throat> look at this one this is a complex root but these coefficients are real 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 and real because it says p is real so therefore if w minus 1 minus 2i is a factor because w equals 1 minus 2i then also w must equal 1 plus 2i the conjugate to make sure that the uh, imaginary parts will disappear so that there they are my two factors my third factor is just going to be w minus k or w plus k which if you want to call it i'll call it i'll call it that um, now all i need to do now is try and expand these brackets here which i'll do using a box as i can do a three by three relatively easily here this is w minus one plus two i this is w minus one minus two i so when i uh, expand that that's going to be w squared negative w 2iw negative w positive 1 minus 2i minus 2iw positive 2i and negative 4i squared now that part and that part will cancel as will this part and this part will cancel this one here will turn into positive 4 which means this part here and here will combine so now we're left with well, this green part actually is w squared minus 2w plus 5 and so now if I have this bracket here which is w plus k what does k need to be so that when I expand this w cubed plus kw squared minus 2w squared minus 2kw plus 5w plus 5k what is what does the k need to be here so that it equals this top part and if you look at it 5 times 4 needs to be 20 so k therefore needs to be 4 so now we've got w squared minus 2w plus 5 into w plus 4. Now if we wanted to find out what p is, find the value of p, p is this part here, isn't it? The w's. So that's going to be negative 2 times 4 plus 5 which is negative 3 in other words just expanding this bracket so now this is no longer 2k this is now minus 8 and this is now 20 and that is now 4 so what i've got here are my answers maybe not all relevant so sorry obvious but p is, what are we saying? p is negative 3. Solutions. w equals 1 plus and minus 2i. And w equals negative 4. 
Hopefully that makes sense. As you can see from here, it's, it's quite an um, algebra heavy question when you look at that. Excellent, you need all three solutions and P equals uh, negative three. Okay, so it really should be all four solutions. You apply the conjugate theory and generate the second root using, so I'd, I'd say if you get down to uh, the K equals four part, that's your probably your merit tick and up here if you get to express this as a single expression there is your achieve tick after each of these questions make sure you mark yourself no n1 n2 n3 sorry a3 a4 m5 m6 e7 and e8 um you get the excellence question right here's your e8 if you make a minor error you can get an e7 there hopefully that makes sense as you can see with the answer um, schedule she looks quite tricky um, lots of ways of doing it get these four answers here is your excellence tick make sure you've got your p equals negative three in there as well to get your uh, achieved if you write some expression for um, w there and then you apply the second root and you um, you apply that and you get an answer that is w plus k or you get this answer here probably more importantly that one there is probably your um, merit tick there question two all right so to solve this equation i'm going to complete the square so x minus two all squared that equals x squared minus four x plus four so I need to have this plus 5 so that it equals this part here, don't I? So now to solve that, all I'm going to do is subtract 5 off both sides and take the square root of both sides and this is where I can't. So I chuck in my i squared and make that a positive. That becomes x equals 2 plus and minus the square root of 5i. I probably should have the plus and minus in there to make it obvious for you guys. Next question. Given that, well, that's the same sort of question as what's before, eh? So u equals 2 cis pi over 6. u to the power of 4 is just going to be that to the power of 4. It's going to be 2 to the power of 4 sis 4 times pi over 6 which is 2 thirds so that's n2 to the power of 4 is 16 I believe in the form of uh, in the rectangular form so I'm just going to go 16 times cos 2 pi over 3 plus i sine 2 pi over 3 <sighs> That cos 2 pi over 3 is going to be negative 1 half. Sine 2 pi over 3 is going to be uh, root 3 over 2 i. And we're just going to multiply that by 16, which is going to leave us with negative 8 plus 8 root 3 i. There's lots of ways of solving this one. Um, the um, Marking schedule on the next page is a slightly different way, so I'll go this way. I'm going to say let u equal root x plus 2. So now this equation becomes u minus 3 over u equals 2. Now if I times everything by u, I'm going to get rid of that denominator u. u squared minus 3 equals 2u. Now I've got a quadratic that I can solve relatively easily because I can factorize this to be that and that. I've got also solutions of u equals 3 and u equals negative 1. But I'm not asked to solve for... Oh, sorry, I just got interrupted. Um, so u equals 3 and u equals negative 1, but I'm not asked to solve for you, I'm asked to solve for x. So u equals 3, so actually 4 plus x all square rooted 
equals 3, and 4 plus x all square rooted equals negative 1. Now, this here is, in essence, that's the positive square root, eh? So you see I put the positive up here, that's the positive square root. So this is the positive and this is the positive as well. So I can't actually do that. There is no solution there. There is not an x value that I can put in here to make it equal negative 1. So there's my no solution there. No solution there. But I can check on this other one. So for square both sides, um, 4 plus x equals 9, x equals 5. Check the solution. Check solution. Um, square root of 4 plus 5 is 9. Square root of 9 is 3. Minus 3 over uh, the square root of 9. 4 plus 5. So that's, that's 1. In the equation it says equals 2. That equals 2. That's correct. Here's my solution. So you can see here, this is how they uh, did this question we just did. So what they did is they multiplied through by um, this root 4 plus x, making getting rid of that square root symbol, and over here, putting it over here. And then what they had to do is they had to square it um, to get rid of the square root symbol. And when they check, x equals 5 is the only answer, not x equals 3. So what you would do is you correctly solve an equation to find the two solutions. Okay, so there's your achieve tick. Checking gives you your merit tick, which is slightly different to the way I did it, but you can still get a merit and achieve doing the way I did it. Excuse me. First question, yeah, they've solved it using the quadratic equation there, which is fine, no worries. And the next one, um, it's pretty self-explanatory, but you need to uh, get this part here got you your achieved, and this part here in rectangular form gave you your solution. Um, all right. Next question. So correct answer only for here, and for this one, if you're able to give it to me in. Um, in this form, there's my achieved in uh, A and B. So in rectangular form is merit, in polar form is achieved. So as you can see, my my working through is a little bit different to the marking schedules, but you can still do it this way and, and get you a mark. So solving to here would get you an achieved tick, um, and solving and checking into here, understand that that is my only solution, um, is my merit tick. Solve the equation. Alright, so this is again another De Moivre's theorem type um, solution. So at the moment this is in uh, rectangular form. Up here 8k cubed I, there's my rectangular form, so that there's my complex number. To apply the Moivre's theorem, I really need to have it in polar form. So therefore, z <coughs> cubed is um, the magnitude of that, which is 8k cubed. The argument, which is pi over 2, so it's 8k cubed cis 90 or cis pi over 2. So to um, to apply your De Moivre's theorem, what we're going to do is we're going to go z cubed to the power of a third. That's going to give us our z. So it's going to be 8k cubed to the power of a third is going to be 2k. There's our modulus times cis pi over 2 times a third is going to be cis pi over 6. So there's our one solution. Okay. Now that says 
uh, sys pi over 6, that's 90 divided by a third, that's sys of 30, so that and it's out there here. It's 2k sys pi over 6. Now, because there are three solutions, I know the other solutions over here are going to be 120 degrees away. Okay, 120 degrees away. The reason for that is because of the Moivre's theorem. So actually what we've got is we've got our Zn is equal to 2k um, sys pi over 6 plus 2n pi times a third. It's our 360 times a third, which actually becomes, let's cross that out and make it um, pi over 6 plus uh, 2n pi over 3. You can see how it's already a little bit trickier to follow in. Sorry, I got interrupted again. Um, so that's what we've got. We've got Zn is 2k sys of. 30 plus 120. 2k sys of 30 plus 120 n. Okay, so if I put on some different values of n and I'll get some I'll get some three different solutions. So my first solution is my one above 2k sys pi over 6. My second solution is 2k sys pi over 6 plus 2 pi over 3. Oh, that's 4 pi over 6. That's going to be 5 pi over 6. So 2k sys 5 pi over 6. And my third solution is going to be 2k sys pi over 6 minus 2 pi over 3. Because here is my 5 pi over 6, so I know it's going to be minus because I know my argand diagram. Which again is uh, 2k sys, that's 4 pi, that's 1, so that's going to be um, pi over 2, or negative pi over 2. There are my solutions. So you can see here, if you convert to polar form, there's your achieve tick. Getting one of the solutions, so dividing by or raising to the power of a third, I think that one's not, not too bad, gives you a merit. Finding all three solutions gives you your excellence tick. And see here that's just plus a third. So that's um that's 30, that's 150. And that's negative 90 for those of you that can't convert radians, which is disappointing on my behalf if you cannot yet. Um, but again, mark that question out of 8. Okay, so from here, if you're able to convert to polar form, there is my achieve tick. At least one correct solution, so getting down there and getting that correct solution. So applying to Moivre's theorem is my merit tick. And getting all three answers is my excellence. Question 3, polynomial divided by that gives a remainder of 12. So two ways of doing it. The easiest way is using the factor theorem or the remainder theorem, which says if we divide by x minus 2, it's the same as if we just find the value when x is 2. So that equals 2, 2 cubed plus 2 squared minus 3 lots of 2 plus q and that all equals 12. That's 8, so that's 16 plus 4 is 20, minus 6 is 14, minus 2 equals 12, so k equals negative 2, okay, q equals negative 2. This one here can be a little bit on the tricky side to start with, like it just looks confusing. But it's, and if you look at the marking schedule, she too looks pretty confusing. But let's break it down. So P, 3 plus 4i times z is going to equal negative 2 plus 3i minus 1 minus i. 
is R and there's Q. What I basically said is PZ is R minus Q. Hope that makes sense. And so now what we're doing is we're just going to do that that maths. So it's going to be negative 2 minus 1, that's going to be negative 3. Negative, sorry, 3i minus negative 1, that's going to be positive 4i. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say z is actually that divided by 3 plus 4i. Now I need that denominator to not be a uh, imaginary number, so I'm going to times by the conjugate. And I'm going to be left with um, brackets that I will expand. That's negative 9. That's positive 12i. That's also positive 12i. That's uh, negative 16i squared. All over 9 minus 12i plus 12i minus 16i squared. So that's going to be positive 16. That's going to be positive 16. Sorry about that again. It sounds like I'm popular, but I don't think I am. But anyway, what we've got here is negative 9 plus 16, which is, gee, was that 7? Plus 24i all over, that part there cancels, all over 25 which if we write in the solution of a plus bi would be 7 over 25 plus 24 over 25 i. There is my solution of a plus bi. Hopefully that makes a bit of sense. What the polynomial is the product of the linear factors. Now that questionnaire is quite a tricky one to think of, but if you, you think of linear factors, it's just asking you to factorize it. There's going to be four brackets there. Okay, so what I can do now is go, well, can't solve that easily. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, um, well, that's just u squared minus 8u minus 9. So that's just u minus 9 and u plus 1. So that's z squared minus 9 and z squared plus 1. z squared minus 9, that's just z plus 3, z minus 3. z squared plus 1. Okay, well let's just go z squared equals negative 1. Um, oh, actually no, let's not do that. Let's just take that to be minus i squared, eh? Because that's, that there is positive 1, isn't it? Because now I've got the difference of two squares, so I can just make it um, z plus i, z minus i. z plus i, z minus i. So there it is written as a product of its linear factors. And if you look here, um, <coughs> factor theorem, remainder theorem, um, correct expansion. So probably they really wanted you to go down this route here and be able to identify that's a uh, conjugate. So it gives you the correct expansion through there. Correct answer in that A plus B I form. If you find the two real factors, it's probably the easiest ones. Um, you could you could do it lots of ways. You could find p of one, um, p of two. Notice that p of three, p of three is zero. So therefore, z minus three is a factor. And if it was three, you could have tried negative three as well and got zero. So you could have said that z plus three is a factor. And if you can identify those two factors there, that is your achieved tick. All four factors. Um, is your uh, merit tick there. 
3a correct answer only is your achieved tick from here if you're able to get that far there is your merit correct expansion so getting to this step here um, is probably your achieved tick next question <coughs> two linear factors two linear factors from here is probably my achieved all four is my merit okay round three at this one <coughs> narrow solutions that suggests we're going to be talking about the discriminant and the discriminant's going to be less than zero to solve this we need to um, move that uh, root symbol to the other side so we've got um, 2 root 2x minus k now when we square both sides we're going to get rid of that uh, root symbol so it's going to be 25 plus 10x plus x squared that's equal to 4 lots of 2x minus k we expand that we're going to get 8x minus 4k when we rearrange this we're going to get x squared 10x minus 10x minus 8x is positive 2x 25 minus negative 4k that's going to become 25 plus 4k and that's all going to equal zero here is my a here is my b and here is my c so that when i use the discriminant b squared minus 4ac being less than zero i'm going to have um, 2 squared minus 4 lots of 1 lots of 25 plus 4k and that's going to all be less than 0 4 minus 100 minus 16k is less than 0 so therefore that's going to become negative 96 is less than 16k Divide both sides by the 16, and I'm going to get negative 6 is less than k, or k is greater than negative 6. Here's my answer. Okay, so as you see the answer schedule, um, quadratic equation found, so you're getting this part just here, should be your uh, merit. Correct answer down here with a logical chain of reasoning make sure it makes sense again mark your question if you got two u ticks then you got a3 if you got one m tick sorry one r tick then you get an m5 so you can see where i've got here so here is my merit tick just there here is my excellence tick just there so remember overall whatever you got for each question so question one question two question three you might get an n2 and a3 and a m5 add these numbers up two three five gives you ten points ten points fits in this bracket here so you're going to get an a10 okay Hope that makes sense. Hopefully that was helpful, gentlemen. Kaki day.